What was, for you, the best part of the pandemic? No traffic. Same. My normal 40 minute ride into work became 20 and my normal 60 minute ride home became 20. Yup and that lovely silence that goes with the lack of traffic. Plus the little things, like realizing 95% of our jobs are meaningless and the meaningful jobs are drastically underpaid, first responders, supermarket workers, sanitation workers, truck drivers. There's probably a football stadium full of essential workers that perished because they couldn't stay home and sadly they won't get any recognition for it. But they got so many shout outs and thank yous from celebrities. Heart signs on people's lawns. Didn't you hear that we were all in it together? Second week of pandemic, my subdivision had a thing where you put a teddy bear in a window, then kids would drive around with their parents, spotting the bears. It was nice for the kids. Lost 60 pounds. Wife lost 75. We were fat. We are not anymore. Way to go. I think your lost weight was found by many others over the pandemic. I think I stored like 15 of them temporarily. I've passed them along since. Seriously. Two years of trying to work out from home was a total bust. Was pushing a lockdown bod. Lots of comfort, indulgence, and anxiety. Worst shape I've been in since college. So happy to be back in the gym now. Ironically, not getting sick. I haven't had a cold or anything in years. Flu numbers were way down, too, even though there were less vaccinated, due to my provinces, Ontario, Canada, we had some of the strictest lockdowns in the world, restrictions and mask mandates. My mom made masks at the beginning, to CDC guidelines, before Omicron, and sold them for $5 to $12 each depending on fabric, she had all kinds, but NFL and NHL prints were most expensive, and a local store was ordering 30 a day, she made and sold over 2,000 masks. She could make 50 in a day. I got sick once a year prior to the pandemic. It was like a cold that ended with me losing my voice. For days. Around the same time every year too. Pandemic hit and I didn't get sick in that way since. So I actually work in an ER and was swimming in COVID for a while. This was especially concerning in the pre-vaccination days. I'm one of those people who catches every respiratory bug out there and usually have a couple of bad colds slash bronchitis every year that make me really miserable for a few weeks. From spring of 2020 until May of 2022 I didn't get sick once. I got COVID in May of 2022 when there was an outbreak at my kid's school and we figure she brought his home. That was the first time I had been sick since the start of the pandemic. It's almost like masking works. In all seriousness, I'll probably continue to mask during flu season in the future. Spending time with aging pets. I had to put down a cat in the last few months he got to lay on my keyboard and purr all day. I also have an old dog who is nearing the end and I'm really happy I had those months at home with her. I also lost one of my cats last year. I'm so thankful I had a full year of being home with her and getting all the cuddles. I miss her every day but knowing I was present all the time for her in her last year does bring me some peace. I was the complete opposite of you and op. Four months into the pandemic, I went to the shelter and adopted a six-month-old Siberian furball because I was so lonely and depressed from the constant isolation. Just coming across this question made me grimace because the solitude of the pandemic really got to me, but he was probably the only good thing to come from it. People standing six plus feet away from me at all times. This for me times 1000. My entire adult life I've always had a pet peeve about others people's lack of awareness for others personal space. Particularly standing in line for something. This was like heaven for me for almost two years. Now no one gives a crap and it's back to the normal BS of people jammed up in line and wherever else. Not having to get up early in the morning. Oh dear god, this was and still is so amazing. I had to commute an hour by train for my job at the time, and suddenly. No more commute. Just sleeping an hour longer, having an hour extra time at home in the evening. I changed jobs in the meantime, now I'm 15 minute walk away from the office. And I still don't have to go in, and it's still heaven. I used to have to be up at 6 am and was home at 6.30 pm every day. To get 8 hours of sleep I would have to go to bed at 10 pm. That's 3.5 hours to prepare and eat dinner and walk the dog. No TV, no video games, no consistent gym schedule, it was terrible. Work from home, life even if I work 50-60 hour weeks, has given me a work-life balance I never had before. In the winter before the pandemic hit I got a job in the next county over, a 45-minute drive, over crazy rural roads in the early dark hours with occasional icy patches and fog. 
I'd also have to wake up around 5.45 to 6 a.m. I hated it. The roads were awful but I was a new college grad and despite the low pay it was a job with good benefits. Then the pandemic hit a few months later, I felt so free. Suddenly being able to sleep in, wear whatever I wanted, no commute home. After they brought people back into the office I quit and found a job that's remote 4 days a week. I love it. The pay is great too. I never want to go back to driving and being in an office 5 days a week. I feel like I have so much of my life back now. And remote work is the norm, I'm so glad the pandemic did that. Wife died August 2020 of cancer the lockdowns meant I could grieve without any pressure. In the long run, this saved my life. Edit, thanks for all the kind words. Another great thing is that because of the lockdowns, between then and her death we got to spend every waking minute together. I am very thankful for that time. For anyone wondering, life moves forward and it gets better eventually smile I miss her every day though. I have met someone who has shown me that I can love again. It's what my wife would have wanted. I thrived in the isolation. Everyone I knew was losing their minds and here I was chilling and living my best life. Also worked from home. I even enjoyed going out shopping for groceries. Because it was always dead. I did my part and wore a mask. I kinda miss it. You're not alone. I own a 6 unit apartment and I have one of the units for when I'm in town. Anyway, I put a pool table in my garage and me and my tenants played billiards and smoked cigars every afternoon and evening. It was like being back in college. They say you shouldn't do that, but every one of them paid me each month even though they could have skipped payments. I lowered the rent too. Funny thing is that we still are playing albeit not as much. I always wondered, will I be bored or depressed when I eventually retire, or is retirement going to be awesome? Based on my COVID experience, retirement is going to be awesome. I love being at home, and I love my own company. Set me up with a cup of coffee, a podcast, and a jigsaw puzzle, and I'm happy as a clam. Something kind of interesting, but I found my reaction to isolation from general COVID lockdown stuff was way different from my reaction to isolation because I was actually sick with COVID. The COVID lockdowns? I was fine. Probably because I could still interact with the people in my house and my pets. Isolating for 10 days because I got sick with COVID. I was miserable as hell. I'm not even that social, I just think there was some weird psychological difference between having the option to interact with my household, even if I don't actually interact with them that much, versus not having the choice at all. I developed weirdly severe anxiety, depression, and paranoia. It might have partly been because of the illness, the mental effects hit me way harder than the physical symptoms, but I wouldn't be surprised if it also was encouraged by my forced isolation. Was kind of an interesting personal experiment I guess now that I'm looking back at it. My partner tested positive for COVID about a week before I was scheduled for surgery, BSOP, and having to isolate in different rooms and wear masks around the apartment in the kitchen and bathroom was rough. It was only a few days, but we've basically never been apart since moving in together three years ago and are usually super touchy and affectionate. Luckily I didn't get it and surgery went ahead as planned. Prior to the pandemic, I traveled every week for work. For six years, I only saw my wife and kids on the weekends. And even then, I didn't get to see my wife much since she worked most weekends. Since the pandemic, I haven't had to travel at all, and have a new, much better relationship with my wife and kids. Opposite for me. Spending 24 hours a day with my wife and the kids put a huge strain on our relationship, along with both of us drinking more than we should have, only after the kids were in bed. On one hand it led to a terrible divorce, and on the other hand, we are both much happier now. You either realize you don't spend enough time together or realize you are using work to avoid the realization that you're incompatible. Either way it's for the best. Felt that, she's a good woman, and I'm a good man, sometimes it just doesn't work out. The kids are taken care of and that's all we care about. I had two friends that I hung out with almost every night. They were just as isolated as I was during the day so we weren't too worried about passing anything. None of us got sick. Spent the nights drinking having bonfires and talking. Good times. Some of the best. Yeah, I had a COVID gang. Great times, it was like being a kid again in some ways, I hadn't had a regular hangout going on since college. It's all over now for various reasons but it was good while it lasted. It was like the good parts of high school. You didn't have shit to do so you just hung out at each other's houses and did whatever or nothing at all. This. My wife and I also had our designated COVID buddies, who were another couple. 
Our rules were generally that only the four of us would hang out with each other, and on the rare occasion we'd interact with someone else, we'd stay apart for two weeks before hanging out again. Same. I had a group of five bubble friends. We, poorly, played golf together, watched movies on a screen in the backyard, and got drunk after work. I started working from home which saved me three hours of commuting time and gave me an additional eight hours awake time slash day with my one year old who is now three and a half. Not many fathers get that much time with their kid and I still work from home. I'm surprised more time with my kids isn't higher up. My son was five when the pandemic hit and I got to spend exponentially more time with him. It's the greatest gift I have ever received. Mine were 8 and 6 when it hit, most of their lives I had a crap commute and didn't get home until 7.30pm, 19.30, and barely got to spend any time with them. Company put me on 3 inches slash 2 remote and even that's too much time away from the kids. Soon enough they'll want nothing to do with me, but not yet. Me too. My youngest was 2 and the other just turned 5. It was amazing to spend so much time with them. My husband and I were thrilled to be together. And then there's all the friends who got divorced or broke up within a few months of it ending or even before. Ha. Huh. Yeah, it was a real make or break situation for a lot of relationships. We made it through just fine. Glad to hear you did too. We almost didn't make it. The wife's PPD last two years and she wanted almost nothing to do with me. If the pandemic didn't hit we probably would have divorced but it would have been virtually impossible to arrange moving out and so we stuck it out and when the PPD finally went away we went back to normal. I've always tried to get people to take workplace slash office hygiene more seriously. Too often have I seen people come into work sounding hoarse, sneeze into their hand, then go use the office coffee maker. For about a year and a half, people actually did start taking this sort of thing seriously. Proper hand washing, using sanitizer, being a bit more mindful of spreading germs, not coming in when sick. Unfortunately, people don't seem to have learned much, and things are quickly reverting to the old ways. The first week of COVID, before everyone got sent home to work, our office building ran out of hot water by 9.30 am because people actually started washing their hands. I was disgusted because it meant people just didn't do it before. I transitioned during COVID and started using men's rooms for the first time. I'd heard jokes about men not washing their hands, but surely, I thought, that was before the pandemic. At least now people will wash their hands after using the bathroom. Nope. Dudes just walk out the door after taking a dump. It is horrifying. Men's rooms are the worst. This is one reason I don't shake people's hands anymore. So disgusting. And it never even crossed my mind until the pandemic because shaking a hand is so normal. But now I want to throw up just thinking about how many men's hands I shook after they just got done handling their dick in the bathroom. My last semester at uni. Instead of waking up at 6.30 am and dragging my ass to several classes that taught me nothing of value, I could just read the weekly notes and finish assignments on my own time. I flunked my final semester when it switched to online midway through. Edit, I also don't like work from home. This might not be your fault though. A lot of teachers slash professors assigned a lot more work due to remote learning. That plus the reduced opportunities for on the fly question slash answer moments can result in students feeling isolated and overburdened. And, this applies to work from home too. Some people just struggle with the lack of social contact, me being one of them. I lost two friends to suicide during lockdown and another friend is currently dying of cancer after her doctor, who mostly wasn't offering face-to-face -face appointments, dismissed her symptoms as long COVID and didn't correctly diagnose her until more than a year later when it had spread. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about the video in the comments below and while you're at it, drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Anyways, have a blessed day.